Ladies and gentlemen, it's the most wonderful time of the week once again, taking place during the most wonderful time of the year as we approach uh, fastly the holiday season. We're here now with the founder of the largest online progressive community, DailyCoast.com, founder of one of the biggest polling firms with a with a very big sample size. That's what makes a big difference. Civics with a Q.com. Also the host of The Brief, the new and exciting and very, very popular podcast. He is Marcos Melitza is here with us for Thursday Coast. Hey, buddy, how are you? Doing good. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always. And, uh, yes, sir. We've been doing this a while and we've uh, always had a lot of fun doing it. So uh, um, uh, there was a lot of reaction to our conversation last week about Latinx. A lot of people uh, enjoy the conversation, but then one uh, one person tweeted, <laughs> yeah, this is good, but you all need to go back telling us what's going to happen with the midterms. I was like, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> clearly, they realized we did a little departure from what we normally do. They were like, this this needs to be, you need to go back and tell us what's going to happen in 2022. So uh, why don't, <laughs> why don't we... Uh, why don't we uh, do that? And and obviously, you know, um, I've been having a lot of conversations with guests about the whole voting rights piece, other legislation, just just what the House and Senate are doing to incentivize voters in our Democratic base uh, to to uplift morale. And let me tell you something, man. Uh, and I tell you two piece legislation. There's there's the the each act which would be timely in terms of Roe being under attack. Uh, and I know you talked about the Supreme Court on the brief this week. Um, we are about four votes from passage of H.R. 40, which would definitely mobilize the African-American community. But it's January around the corner and seemingly Democrats may be af afraid to take on either bill like that. Each act sponsored by Barbara Lee. Um, the um, H.R. 40 sponsored by Sheila Jackson Lee. But, you know, the Democrat, at least, well, we don't want to uh, offend voters during the midterms, but they're going to have to do something to mobilize our base. So I don't know what what's what do you think is. And then the Senate is not doing what it needs to do uh, at the moment, especially when it comes to voting rights. So what do you think about about all that, Marcos? And where do we stand? Which one's H.R. 40? Reparations. The reparations ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. bill. Yeah. The commission to study what forms reparations might take. And, you know, th th to be clear, 200 between uh, uh, co-sponsors and committed yes votes, we're at 214, which says a lot. Uh, Steny Hoyer and Jim Clyburn were saying, well, we don't want to uh, put moderates in trouble. But but all but three, three or four moderates are on the bill now. Mm -hmm. So they're ready. I think they know their constituency needs that or at least needs to see them making an effort. And it's the only piece of legislation, mind you, that if the Senate doesn't take it up, Biden can do by executive order. Um, so Biden is saying, I won't do it by executive order unless you pass it in the House. Uh, Steny Hoy is saying, we won't pass it in the House unless you agree to do it by executive order. Yeah, so. you know, that's that's <laughs> so ridiculous. And, and it's not like Joe Biden isn't happy to do a commission when he wants to bury something like expansion of the Supreme Court. I mean, that commission was a was a bit of a not a bit. It was it was pretty much a joke and was designed to basically protect Democrats from having to take a position. So if you want to protect those moderates from taking a position from a bill that Republicans would claim when they're taking your money and giving it to black people. Right. I mean, that's going to be the argument that they're going to make. Then just have Biden do it um, and have have. Um, and then no moderate has to take a, a difficult vote. That's that's such ridiculous nonsense. Um, Biden is, is is struggling right now in his in his polling. And if you look at the polling, it's not from Republicans. They already didn't like him, right? They he never had Republican support. Right. Biden is his numbers have dropped in most of the polling, including civics, about fifteen to twenty points amongst Democrats. And also some independents, but 
we've talked about this before. There, there's no such thing as independent, you know, I'm going to weigh both sides. And no, that doesn't exist, right? There's independents that are Bernie supporters and there are independents that are Tea Party supporters. They are literally opposite ends. Most, and Pew has found this in their studies, only about 3%, 3 to 5% of people can vote between, will shift between the parties. And they are also the least engaged voters. These are not regular voters. They're, they're not people who are going to turn out. I mean, they may turn out and vote for Donald Trump because they think it's funny or Kanye. They're not actually like, <laughs> they're not, they're not actually like weighing the positions seriously. And that, that, that does, does not exist. So if you see independents, you know, Biden is losing ground amongst independents, it's Bernie supporters. And <laughs> I mean, it, it, it tracks, right? I mean, this is not, this is not rocket science. He oh, never okay. had Tea Party independents. They never, they, they were always against them. So he is losing ground amongst his own party. And that is disastrous because it's what happened in 2010 with Obama, right? You're turning off your supporters and you're going to need every single one of them next year because now we know we learned last year no not last year we learned this year in this past november that trump voters are now turning out even if trump is not on, on the ballot so we can't depend on them to stay home we hope they would that was that was you know they didn't it's just a reality we have to win um and you have to engage and motivate your people to vote. So I still don't understand why we haven't forgiven student debt. I still don't understand why we have not Now, maybe Biden is looking for a politically opportune time to do so and maybe closer to the election for... No, people are getting pissed and turned off and angry right now. Deliver for them. Give up. No, instead what he did, what? He just announced that they're going to have... They're going to start payments again. He didn't, he didn't, you know, it was the opposite. You know, there was a, there was a grace period because of the pandemic. You know, he just announced that that's going away instead of actually offering student loan debt relief. So, um, and then you got Manchin in the, in the Senate uh, still being obnoxious on Bill Deck better uh, to the point where I know Democrats are starting to consider just <laughs> putting it aside, right? And just saying like, you know, what can... We work on so they're talking about voting rights and at this point it's, it's joe manchin's voting rights bill he wrote the thing democrats said okay what will you give us and we've talked about this before uh mark it came out better than anybody expected it's it's a real bill it's a real advancement if joe manchin's but none of it matters if he doesn't get rid of the filibuster to make it happen right so right. so we're, we're we're just in this sort of limbo right now where the filibuster is blocking everything, Biden seems to be afraid to use executive order to make anything happen. I mean, definitely with student loan. I didn't realize that on reparations, it was the same crap happening, right? So he's clearly afraid right now. Um, I don't know. Some of it may be justified. Some of it not. I mean, <laughs> Republicans are going to invent attacks against us regardless, right? Critical race theory and and Honduran caravans. I mean, they'll, they'll lean under racism no matter what. Right. That's, that's, yeah. that's their playbook. That's literally the only thing they have. Mitch McConnell said he's not even going to bother trying to do an agenda. Why? I don't care about agenda anymore. It's, it's anti-democracy nihilism. That's republicanism right now. So um, it, it's, it's giving me shades of 2010, Mark. And it's not too late. Um, it's definitely not too late, but right now, if Democrats don't start delivering quickly so they can spend six months selling the benefits of the, of the COVID stimulus, of Build Back Better, they can't be sitting there and arguing about this stuff all the way up to October, which is, you know, we just wasted a year. We just wasted a year arguing with Joe Manchin over crap that just tell us what you want Freaking do it or buy and moth, give you know million dollars to every coal miner in in uh in West Virginia. Whatever. Do whatever it takes to get his vote. But I don't think he's interested. I think he's just interested in being an a-hole and in obstructing and delaying. Yeah, yeah. More MIP after this message. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save money on your insurance? 
Of course you would. After all, who wouldn't love a great deal, right? And when it comes to great rates on insurance for all of the things in your life, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners, condo, or renters coverage. You could save even more with a special discount when you bundle your coverages. Plus, add the easy-to-use GEICO mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more. And choosing to switch to GEICO becomes an easy choice. Switch to Today and see all the ways you could save with great rates and discounts. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com to get a rate quote or contact your local agent and get started seeing how much you could save. And and to be honest with you, even though Republicans do what they always do, they're still at slight disadvantage because uh, we know they're not good at pivoting things. I mean, I, I think they're all in on critical race theory. I think it's going to be hard for them to pivot. They invested everything in that argument. Things will be hard to pivot from that to anything else that we might pass that they could leap on one. Because frankly, just to remind everybody, when the, when, when the hearing was held last year in House Judiciary on H.R. 40 before it went to, to the House awaiting a vote, Jim Jordan all in when hearing Marcos and ladies and gentlemen talking about critical race theory, they wouldn't even address the bill directly. They all they they have placed all their bets on that. So there's that reality. Plus two other things, Marcos, it would seem we would also exploit and have the courage to stand up. One, Chris Wallace left Fox News Channel. That's a, that's a major blow to whatever credibility was left. That's one. Two. Liz Cheney, God bless her, released all of the, t- and I never thought I'd say that about, you know, no. Darth, Vader's, Darth Vader's daughter. Um, uh, and, he, and he called himself, see, Mark was not a name yeah. Darth Vader. He said he was Darth Vader, right? Okay. Yeah. So that means it's probably worse than Darth Vader. He's probably <laughs> the, em- the emperor. Okay. Uh, so so uh, she releases text messages from Fox News hosts, from Donald Trump Jr. Imploring crazy Trump to do something about January 6th. And we're scared. I'm afraid too, Marcos, we've talked about this before. There's this, as you said, about the the whole independent thing, there's still this consultant class that holds sway over Democratic Party leadership thinking, the White House thinking, be be careful, let's not do this, let's not do that. But but I think that's 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 going to hurt us. And you're right. In 2010, remember we we Marco's not been doing this so long. We were talking about this in 2010. Um, how uh, the Obama White House practically conceded before it even got started. We always lose seats in the midterms. Stop saying that. Organize. Do some. Stop conceding that. And I'm afraid that that same culture mm, is yeah. taking over again. I mean, it would be okay. If they were using that as an impetus to get everything passed before the midterm, like past voting reform and Supreme Court expansion and D.C. statehood and build back better. If you said, OK, you know, we have a moment in time, we have this opportunity and the map does not look good for us this year. It certainly is not looking good for us in 2024. That Senate map is brutal in 2024. Let's take this opportunity to get as much passed as possible. And it will run on that and let the chips fall where they may fall, right? It is what it is. But we can't even do that because of because of mansion and cinema. We you know, we cannot do even basic <laughs> let's look at the calendar. We have a year, we have a year left. Let's let's do what we can. And um and it 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 is um obviously it's 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 frustrating and mind boggling. And yet we're, we're, um, you know, seemingly we're trapped in this, in this, in this loop that's playing out all over again, history playing all over again. Um, because yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume now we lose control of both chambers of Congress. I'm not saying we will, and we're going to fight really hard to make sure we don't. But if we think this is our moment, then maybe that might give some impetus to get, you know, get some stuff done. Um, on the Supreme court, and I know you dealt with that on the brief this week. So the commission, at first it was reported the commission didn't support expansion. Yeah. But then the commission took another type of vote before they concluded their work right. And that that now that is is a little grayer, isn't it? Um, as I understand it, 
the commission was specifically tasked. It was a book report. It was <laughs> tasked with not actually rec recommending anything. It was supposed to be like a state of, of play sort of thing. And, and so the commission report does not recommend expansion. But a really weird thing happened is that a bunch of academics, and what they did is they just put a bunch of academics. They didn't put anybody who <laughs> actually cares about issues, right? Uh, it was just a bunch of, you, you know, the right throws out its most partisans and puts them on the Supreme Court. You know, the left, it's all about, you know, you know, we got to be impartial. And, but you know, what's really crazy is that a bunch of people, including Lawrence Tribe, who wrote a piece about this, uh, an op-ed in, I think, the Washington Post, went in against expansion, looked at the evidence, and in, in their individual capacity, have come out for court expansion. And there's at least two of the commissioners who, who, who have written about this saying like, yeah, we were against it. And, <laughs> you know, now we're for it. We thought yeah. it was this crazy idea. And, and now it doesn't seem so crazy after all. And the problem with this court and John Roberts is doing his best to try to, to stop it. And he's failing. He's failing at this is that this, there's, there's two major approaches that the court is making that are, that are literally going to destroy the ability of the federal government to do anything. Literally, this is not hyperbole. The first is if, this, um, if the Texas law survives, basically it means that states can now write legislation in a way that avoids judicial review, constitutional judicial review, right? Which is sort of a bedrock of our American democracy. Now... Gavin Newsom in California is going to test this because he's doing a Texas style law, but around right. gun control. Now, do we think the Supreme Court is not going to have a any problem being hypocritical about it? Of course, they're going to, they're going to be hypocritical about it, right? They'll, they'll find some way to distinguish abortion from gun control. Right. Because uh, these are ideologues. They're not legal scholars anymore. They're ideologues. They have a, a ideological goal in mind. The second is a, a case, um, and I'm trying not to get into the weeds too much, but basically the way the government currently works is Congress passes a law saying OSHA needs to do X, Y, and Z, right? They, mm -hmm. OSHA then decides how to implement those goals, right? It's up to the federal agency to, it's called promulgating rules. So the agencies come in and they say, all right, we're going to do X, Y, and Z based. And this is the budget we have that Congress allocated. What this case is trying to do is it's trying to say that eight federal agencies can only do what Congress specifically allows them to do. It will eliminate any sort of um, administrative, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sort of a, prerogative to sort of figure out how to best implement the goals of that administration. So it basically hamstring agencies into not being able to do pretty much anything because laws are not written in the exactly, this is what you need to do exactly line by line by line, right? You already have conservatives complaining about this legislation. It's 20,000 words, right? I mean, you'd have to write, you know, million word bills to tell an agency how to implement a simple rule like, like regulating benzene at the EPA. So that would destroy basically the federal government's ability to do anything. And these are two cases, one that would destroy the ability of federal agencies to do their work and two, the ability of federal courts to, to, um, to oversee state laws. Yeah. Basically, they're out to destroy government. Yeah. Basically, they're out to destroy government and so this now becomes existential we have this demo we have this challenge our democracy from trump's ongoing this is not over ongoing coup attempt and yeah liz cheney is the single person in this country doing the most to save our democracy i, I include all the democrats on that committee and stuff liz cheney is doing more than anybody else and saying that hurts my mouth it hurts <laughs> my soul I don't want to give Liz Cheney any credit for anything. Oh, my God. Ideologically, we're like polar opposites, right? I mean, she's the worst. And, yeah, she's doing more to save our democracy than anybody else in this country right now. Uh, there's that. And then there's this judicial effort to destroy our ability to govern the country. And, and so court expansion and, uh, and um, 
HR1, our ability to vote, to protect the right to vote, they are existential to the existence of this country. And I don't understand why the filibuster, which is not even in the Constitution, is more important to Joe Manchin than actually protecting our democracy, protecting our country. And this is the frustrating fight that we have. And we have one year for him to come around. I don't know what, what it would take, if anything. I mean, he seems pretty dead set, but we have one year for him to see the light um, or, we're, or we're in some real trouble. More MIP after this message. No, you're right. Um, and and I, I guess that, and I've, I think I mentioned this to you before, the Supreme Court in this, in this wrongheadedness may actually help us in the midterms if they make these decisions that pretty much nullify federal review and pretty much um, nullify Roe, then that may actually end up mobilizing our base for us where Biden and party leadership and house leadership and Senate leadership may not do. I mean, women, I don't think women will stand for that. Um, but I mean, that's not, I don't think that's something to, to organize around, to, 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 you know, hope you're, I mean, it's like being in the playoffs and hoping another team beats another team. I mean, you, you want to get there through your own success. Um, and, and so that, that's the only thing about it, but, but you're right. I, I don't get it. I think we're in a very dangerous place. How do we, I mean, what happens? Do, what do we do to get through? to to this party of ours that everybody came out overwhelmingly for in 2020 and people are now saying it's not giving us enough back and and what do democrats think that they can just run on well you know we don't have to do anything because if you all don't vote it's going to be trump it's going to be trump again um i'm not i'm not convinced at this point that even overturning roe gets our base out I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I've been burned too many times. I mean, the Supreme Court basically let the Texas law stand right before the November elections now. And, you know, Democrats try to make it, make it an issue in, in Virginia, and people didn't care. It didn't motivate anybody to turn out. Now, maybe because it wasn't a final decision, um, maybe it didn't have the right impact. But the right has been so effective at mobilizing and energizing its base to turn out around the Supreme Court. This has been a 30 year, no, 50 years at this point, 50 year uh, campaign to overturn Roe. And our side can't be bothered. Yeah. And, and part of the reason is because our side is younger and youth, you know, they're, they're more distracted by, you know, the, the, the pursuits of youth. And I don't, I don't begrudge them for wanting to, you know, they're looking to get married. They're looking to hook up. They're looking to get their education. They, they're into their music, right? I mean, I, I get it. I don't, I don't discount that. I don't in any way don't want to make it sound like I think they're, those are trivialities. I mean, we, I, I went through that phase. How do you motivate such a key component of, your, of our base to turn out is the ages old challenge and I don't think anybody has cracked the code. I mean, we, we've gradually worked on the edges to, to, to move it up. You know, maybe some of the lowest hanging fruit um, get them engaged. But we do a poor job of, of mobilizing and engaging. And, and um, you know, the black community is voting now in the same numbers as white voters. I don't know what it was in Virginia. I haven't gone back and looked la uh, this past November, but uh, Latinos still vote very, very low rate. And, and uh, Democrats do a poor job of motivating, mobilizing that community. Um, and uh, obviously, we've, we've, we've just been decimated in rural America. I mean, we've completely lost our ability to compete there. So we have a lot. And we're not talking about winning rural areas, right? It's Instead of losing 85-15, maybe we lose at 70-30, right? I mean, that would make a big difference. But we can run up the numbers all we want. And in the cities, they're killing us in those sparks in cow country. So um, I don't, I mean, obviously, I don't have the answer and nobody has. And, and 
Um, but if we don't figure that out, I mean, Mark, I think a big part of it is just we got to lean on our personal networks. I mean, we have to make sure that people that are around that we are the biggest political influencers um, to our social circle and just lean on getting people to, to register, turn out, vote, get into the polls, like just be active and engaged. I mean, that's that's a big part of it. They're they're engaged 24, 7, 365. And um, we think we won because we won the president. Yeah. Well, I'm, OK, buddy, then in closing, I'm going to put you on the spot. So I'm I'm in your circle, obviously. You've asked me to vote to get out. And then my response is, well, but Marcos, we did that in 2020. The the Democrats are still kind of not motivating, taking us for granted. I mean, why? Uh, Biden didn't do some of the things he said he was going to do. He's been hesitant to do it. Why? Should I do this again? We have gotten vac vaccinations out. Yeah, a lot of people don't want to take it. But in a lot of places, this country is a lot safer than it was back then. We have a child tax credit that has helped keep families afloat. Every single Republican voted against it. You're going to see a whole slew of uh, press releases uh, from Republicans touting new federal spending in their districts. They voted against all of that. That is Democrats from the from the COVID bailout bill to uh, continue efforts. And yeah, the problem isn't the Democrats. The problem is we have Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema in a undemocratic Senate. And we got to fight that. And that's an ongoing battle. But Republicans didn't quit fighting Roe v. Wade 50 years ago when it first when the Supreme Court first decided it. They kept at it and they kept fighting. And this is how you win. Quit. They want us to quit. They want Trump to be able to waltz back in into the White House. And that happens if we don't turn out and vote. And I know it's frustrating and it's not fast and it's excruciatingly obnoxiously <laughs> slow. And we're definitely not getting everything we want right away. But we're not going to get that until we reform the system. And we need bigger majorities to do that. And right now we just don't have them. So we got to work with what we have. And we got to push the people we can. And in the end, even if Joe Biden doesn't get you everything you want, at least there's a person in a White House that will take that into consideration because Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis are not going to do that. So it is what it is. We have to keep fighting and things are better. And Mark, you know, for somebody, you know, we've been in this long enough. The Democratic Party back in the in the in 2000 is not. We've come a long way. I know it's hard for younger people to see that. But it was the party of Max Baucus and Joe Lieberman and telling Howard Dean that civil unions was way too crazy and that talking about gay people having relationships was going to doom Democrats in an election. That's where yeah. we used to be. Yeah. I, did, I didn't need that mental picture of Max Baucus with that wig. I, I I need to re-see that. But, 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 but so ladies and gentlemen, are are you sold? Does that uh, help the you? Wrong audience. <laughs> this is the wrong audience. I don't know, man. I don't know. Really? I don't know. Cause I mean I'm I'm hearing from friends. Yeah. Uh some quietly, some out loud. See, see again, the the the, the problem is, and, and just to be clear, as a gentleman, if if you're sold. Um, let us know through your comments on social media if that's a good argument uh, or if you would craft the argument another way, if you would make a strong argument or whatever, let us know. But friends of ours, especially some of the organizations you have promoted, we have promoted, you know, folks, we've been saying those that are doing voter registration and voting rights work now need your financial support now. All right. To get them going. But what even some of them are saying, and, and it's the, the, the White House hasn't been so discreet about this. The Democratic Party has been saying, oh, we don't have anything to worry about because we know those groups will take care of it. And those groups are saying, wait a minute, y'all aren't giving us anything to work with. Yeah, yeah. You all set us back and then want us to you know, put our blood, sweat and toil <laughs> to save you. And, and some people like they're not they're not feeling that this go round. I mean, that's not the final uh uh dispensation I, I mean i think people are going to be meeting the first year i'm going to meet when people said this what what are we going to do what is it that people 
want to do? What are people prepared to do? What are people willing to do under these circumstances? So I don't know. I, I really don't know that. I, I think everybody's looking for uh, some direction. What Marcos has said today, folks, is very important, is that we were, we've been watching the Trumpers. Will they vote without him being on the ballot? Clearly they will. So it may not even be necessary. So some of us, some folks are counting on, well, if he shows up, that'll help mobilize. But he may not even have to for his people to come out and vote. Uh, and so that that puts us in a, a bit more of a precarious situation. Now, it, 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 it at the end of the day, you know, that has to be a motivator for us if he shows up. If he shows up campaigning with Herschel Walker, Lord have mercy, or whatever. And he will. He will. His ego is not going to allow him yeah, to. Yeah, he can't help. Home. He can't help. But um, um, but, but we, we can't gotta, depend on. Yeah, we cannot depend on. Oh well, hopefully right. people are motivated by Trump to turn out and vote when he's not on the ballot. Um, yeah. yeah, we 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 have. I mean, it would fine would make everybody's life so much easier. Forgive fifty thousand dollars of student debt, uh, and then move aggressively. I mean, to me, the reparation thing by executive order seems like a no brainer. He did it. He just did it with the Supreme Court. Like, just do it. Listen, and I'm just be real with you. See, see, here's what's going on in the black community. And a very high ranking member of the Congressional Black Caucus pointed this out to me. Uh, this person said, and it's not the sponsor of the bill either, that you can't talk about um, compensation for families that were uh, separated at the border. And everybody supports that. I support that. Uh, you and I have suggested reparations for West Virginia's coal miners, so that's not the issue. But you can't talk about family separation at the border and and the DOJ coming up with money for that, and then say to your African American base vote, we're too scared to pass or or to put forward a reparations commission. Yeah, that that just no, it makes no sense. Because because this is the yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the right here is the original. Family do, separation. It, do it by executive order. Jesus, this this is not hard. This is the original family separation. So I, you know, I just want people to understand that. Um, lastly, let's, let's do, before we go, I do want to say this: Tish James did the right thing. She never should have announced for governor. She needs to focus. Yep. And and I and and may, I hope. See, sometimes I say things out loud because I want it to be repeated. And I said to everybody I could in New York in a political position, Tish needs to convict Donald Trump. The, may, the governorship is going to always be there. But if she focuses on charging and convicting him, she will go down in history forever as one of the greatest Americans in the history of the world. So, and that's bigger than the governorship, don't you think? I mean, I, I think that's Ma what she Mark, needs to focus on. That is so objectively and patently obvious that the fact that she announced her governor makes me actually question... <laughs> <laughs> her judgment because well i mean the, clearly, the good news is she's withdrawn that's what i'm saying yeah, i'm glad she, she did that she's clearly ambitious yeah what more cv line item do you want to carry forth your political career than being the person who took donald trump that's right that's like, right how she thought, you know, I'm just going to abandon this this case against trump unless the case is weak and she thought she might lose it and you know I mean, there's there's that, but it really seemed for somebody who's ambitious to even even consider governorship when you've just got handed the biggest opportunity in progressive electoral politics. Like, really made me question whether, like, am I misreading her? Am I? Am I is she not as sharp as I thought she was? Well, well, it, in in fairness, in yeah, fairness. explain. Maybe you know, Bor, because I, so, I got. And again, maybe this, this is this is this is just, um, and and this is just what has been repeated to me. I can't confirm this, but it kind of adds up. Um, um, she, um, Tish looks, and and it's impolite, I know, to talk about a woman's age. Tish looks like a very young woman, but I was shocked to learn. That Tish is either 60 or fast approaching 60. It's hard to believe looking at it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can you believe that? No, I don't. I'm gonna go Google it now because I don't That's know. That's what I was told. <laughs> and so and so what was said to me, they said, Mark, this she's trying to get this done while she still has time. I said, 
this can't be 60. Are you serious? And they told me that. So, okay. Uh, but then I said, but whatever. How many people, people don't, aren't in barbershops and beauty salons talking about New York governors. Yeah, all right. People in barbershops and beauty salons talking about how we going to convict Donald Trump. But I guess yeah. she got it. Her official statement was when she withdrew was that the people expect her to continue her work basically uh, to uphold the rule of law. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. um, and, and they also announced, uh, I, I forget what it was now, I don't have it in front of me, but there were some new um, uh, 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 charges brought by her office or some new subpoenas, I think. I, I, I forget what they were. I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me. So it was the same day that that was announced. Yeah. But, I know, you know, I know Tish, I like her, um, but I was literally in a conversation with uh, her opponent uh, who would not have run if she had announced she was going to run. Jemani Williams, the public advocate, who did very well for lieutenant governor, last time around announced she would run and Jumani and I were at a demonstration at the United Nations. We were demonstrating with a center for public democracy and black voters matter around the hypocrisy of, of Biden holding a, a worldwide democracy summit while the filibuster is still preventing democracy here. Yeah. And I said, Jumani, I mean, does, does Tish know what, I mean, the historical importance of her doing this. And he said, I don't know. Everybody, nobody got it. And then literally an hour after we were having that conversation, <laughs> Tish dropped yeah. out of race. And I called Jumani. I said, Jumani, um, we must be some powerful brothers because we just had this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> she dropped out. But but clearly it was coincidental. But no, so, that was that's that's what but I'm I'm glad that she has seen yeah, that's the other sure. thing. She would not have been able to do that and I and I think run for re-election as attorney general. She is will hands down be a re-elected AG. Yeah. And we need to see this forward. Mm -hmm. and lock this joker up yeah yeah and it, it's it's gonna be tough just a trump is very good at insulating himself from his law breaking and we just saw this with these texts uh to mark meadows his own son couldn't go directly to dad he had to run through mark meadows so basically he creates this barrier to insulate him and of course we there's no rec there's no record of what happened between meadows and donald trump and there never will be um, because yeah. Meadows isn't going to testify, and even if he did, he would lie about it, right? Like, so, um, it's it's tough. This is this is the way that Trump operates. It's how he's protected himself from all his shenanigans. He has no problem with seeing his people go down, as long as he is himself insulated. And so that that's the only thing I could think of. It's like she's looking at the case and she's thinking, I can bring, I can take down the Trump org, but Trump himself is going to avoid any accountability and uh and then you're like the person who let trump get away right <laughs> which yeah. is also so there's 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 risk here but the reward yeah. is huge right the reward and she wasn't going to beat kathy hochel anyway right i mean it was that well was a long right right shot. yeah that was a long shot and then you know if she and jimani on the ballot it splits the splits the uh well so again impolite share a woman's age tish is 63 wow Un i don't believe it it's just unbelievable she looks great god bless her I mean, if anything, she needs to yeah. be uh, doing commercials on what she's doing for us all to look. I mean, if you want to do, then, you know, do that. That's what you're going to do something else. But but uh, the subpoenas were um, uh, the ongoing fraud investigation. And there's some overlap with the Cyrus Vance Manhattan DA Vance investigation. Uh, but but Trump is going to be subpoenaed to testify. That was announced the yeah. same day she chose to drop out of the governor's race. Yeah. So that's, that's a good thing. Tish. I mean, Thank he, you he, he won't show up. It'll take three years to litigate it. I mean, Trump, he also knows how to run out the clock on this shit. Right. So it's a long term battle, but she, hopefully you start, you start, you know, you do what you do to take down the mob, right? You start knocking down the smaller yeah. players and, and work your way up the organization. Right, right, right. And, and that's valuable. So, um, yeah. Uh, um, so, so that she's going to focus on that and it's yeah. it's doing i mean it's doing god's work i mean it's this that, is hello part of saving our democracy is to cut the cut the you know head of the snake by the way the attorney general in the district of columbia carl racine has also uh filed charges against uh the proud boys and yeah. some of those other organizations who tore up the city so all that is good hold these folks accountable yeah uh, and, I also people should realize that the proud boys dressed up in all black because the plan was for them to pretend to be Antifa, to give Trump, and this is not made up. I mean, this is literally right, the memos, right, in the memos. Right. 
That right. would give Trump an excuse to call up the National Guard to protect Trump people from the made-up threat of Antifa. And this is why, even though you had people like, uh, you saw the Fox News personalities, right, talking about telling Trump to call off his, his goons from the, that night they went on Fox News talking about Antifa being the, the cause. They knew damn well it was an Antifa. It was all part of the plan. And that's why the Proud Boys were actually dressed up, not like Proud Boys, but all in black so they could try yeah. to, to right. do this. this is this was all a real legitimate organized attack on our democracy and uh the fact that it failed doesn't lessen just how dangerous and marcus as we know more and more and more it really comes down to mike uh mike pence had mike pence played along we might have been in a different place yeah no yeah. we would have been in a different place definitely would have been a different place Definitely would have been a different place no, that's that's um, we can't we cannot depend well. on one person to protect our democracy. Our institutions failed. And the uh, also there are reports that there's some other plans being made for January 6th and that people are going to try to do some again. They want to do an anniversary. So, you know, it's 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 all insane. Um, Marcos Melitzis, Daily Coast dot com, Civics with Q dot com, the brief, the podcast every week. Do check it out. This is our last uh, visit for the year, right? Yep, uh, uh, last visit for the year. So right. we will so see you in 2022. Mark, happy holidays, Christmas, uh, whatever you may uh, celebrate, uh, New Year's, and to everybody watching and listening, um, love you all, and get ready for a action pack 22. So this is a good time to sort of recharge those batteries, get some rest visit with family, really get a sense of what's important. You know, the, the, yeah. the kids, the grandparents, uh, our friends, people we care about, the issues we care about. Sort of like find that, that the spark, the thing that gets us up in the morning, the thing that yeah. gives us purpose for living. And then we next year we go out and we defend it with everything we have because it is all under assault and we have to fight. So wishing you all a great uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Um, and the New Year's because um, it's been a tough couple of years. And next year, I don't think it's going to be a lot easier. So let's get ready for the big fight. Marco, Sam, you, we all love you, too. Happy holidays to you and yours. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, all of that. And uh, we look forward to getting it revved up again, folks, in 2022 with Marcos, Melitzis, Daily Coast, and Thursday Coast. Thank you, buddy. All right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. All right. You too. You too. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. Please remember to listen, like, and wherever you get your podcasts, please give the show a five-star rating. And please do spread the word. Let's all continue to pray for each other during this pandemic and this police-demic. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been Made Plain. Make it plain.